Hi, my name is Tom Conkle. I'm a cybersecurity engineer with Optic Cyber Solutions, and I've been doing cybersecurity assessments and helping organizations improve their cybersecurity programs for about 20 years now. Um, and over that time, I've seen a lot of different cybersecurity programs, a lot of different challenges, uh, different technologies and capabilities that need to be implemented. Um, but one common thing that I see from all organizations that I work with is the the continual challenge or struggle of understanding how much uh, cybersecurity they need to put, right? Or how do they need to uh, implement their cybersecurity program? So I wanted to take a moment today to talk to you about cybersecurity maturity or cyber maturity and how cyber maturity can help us define what our cybersecurity program needs to um, look like or how we can implement uh, control effectively within our organization. Um, so to kind of step back and, and scope the, the challenge or the challenge that we have with most organizations, right, um, in implementing a cybersecurity program is there's a lot of guidelines out there that tell us what to do, right? We have um, a lot of regulations, standards, in some cases that uh, laws that we need to comply with um, to avoid regulatory fines. Um, and they tell us what we need to do, but in a lot of cases they don't tell us how to, right? For the NIST cybersecurity framework, for example, um, it gives us an understanding of what are the key components of a cybersecurity program, but again, um, it, uh, so that we have an understanding of what we need to do, but it doesn't tell us how we need to implement those controls. Same thing for the security control catalog in 853 and 171. They list out the controls that we need to implement and what needs to be done, but doesn't tell us how to implement those controls. So I wanted to talk for a moment about uh, how cyber maturity can help us with that. So, for example, um, you know, from uh, the various different standards, regulations, requirements, they'll tell us that we need to have things in place like access controls, right? They tell us that we need to manage our assets, but again, they don't tell us how to manage our assets. In many cases, they don't even tell us what assets we need to manage. They leave it up to us as the organization, which is great that we have that flexibility to determine what is appropriate for our organization. But if you're not sure of what is appropriate or how you're going to implement asset management, right? it does lend itself towards a black box if I'm not sure what needs to be done here. Um, so again, the, the standards will help us understand what needs to be done, but not how. So um, as um, we go through that, we can talk about just what is the appropriate for our organization. So if we're looking at a uh, control set such as physical access and saying, right, I need to implement physical controls, right, um, it may say we need to limit physical access to our facilities, All right, That's great, but how do we do that, right? Is, is something a black box sufficient? Do I need something a little bit more robust, um, right? That's up to us. So for example, if I asked you to build a cake for optics anniversary celebration, right? Um, and told you that, you know, here are all the ingredients for a typical cake, would you know how to make the appropriate cake so that we could celebrate our anniversary appropriately, right? Um, and the answer is probably not. It would help you understand what goes into a cake, but you know, how much sugar would you use? That would depend on what kind of cake do you, do we wanna make? How many people are we see, uh, going to feed, right? There's a lot of questions that we need to understand. Just having the ingredient list isn't enough for us to understand what is the appropriate cake. Cybersecurity works the exact same way, right? If we tell you these are all of the components that's in the cybersecurity program, we still need to understand what's important to you, right? Um, what are the risk thresholds you have so that we can understand how much cybersecurity is appropriate to put into your cybersecurity program overall. So if we're trying to bake that cake, having a recipe, right, makes that really easy for us, right? We can agree upon the recipe that we want to make, the type of cake we're doing, and how many people we're trying to feed so that we can say this is exactly how much of each of the ingredients we need to build that cake up, uh, appropriately for our celebration, right? So we can do leverage cyber maturity the same way to understand how much a cybersecurity program needs to be done. So we know we have the standards, the regulations, um, out there that will help us understand what needs to be done. And we can see here as the example, some of the things that um, need to be done is, you know, protecting data at rest, monitoring access controls, and again, back to the limiting physical access, right? These are things that need to be done to make sure that we have a robust cybersecurity program, but we need to understand how are we going to implement each of those appropriately. Um, so if we look at cyber maturity, we can look at that across two, um, two spectrum, if you were, two points of view, right? From a capability maturity to process maturity. 
And what do we mean by that? Capability maturity is how many, how mature does the capability need to be? So again, if we're talking about limiting physical access to our facilities, or what is the appropriate way to limit physical access to our facilities? Would we limit that access through the bike locked up uh, around the door, um, or do we need something more robust, such as a badge or a badge and pin reader, um, to make sure that we have the right cap capability maturity um, for securing the physical access to our environment? In addition to the capability maturity we need to understand how mature does our process for implementing that capability need to be um, process maturity we do typically see is an evolution um, from organizations from small to large uh, the larger the organization the more mature processes need to be in place the uh, more complex an organization or more robust risks that are facing a organization would also require process maturity to increase a little bit so talk about what we mean by each of those. So if we hear we're talking again about uh, access, limiting access to physical and logical assets um, to our facility, right? There are lots of different choices we have for the capability that we can implement. We can go all the way from propping a chair against the door um, to having that uh, you know, a, a standard lock and key to a, a pin and badge all the way up to biometric scanners, uh, depending on, again, what are the risks that we're trying to prevent and how, um, how mature do we need the capability to be to make sure that the access is limited to only the appropriate personnel? But once we've determined the capability maturity, we can also need to understand how does that process need to be implemented, right? Is it okay that we just tell everybody, hey, at the end of the day, make sure you prop the chair against the door so that no one can come in through the front door, right? Um, or is there someone that's responsible for the physical security that's just telling everybody this is what needs to be done? We typically see these process, these lower process maturities with smaller organizations or organizations that don't have very much risk where it is okay that you know if someone got uh, was to break in after we left it would you know wouldn't be the best of things but it's not necessarily going to put us out of business or really cause that much harm so it's okay that we just have a general understanding what the security practices are but if we have more concerns of people coming in and what could happen, right? Then we want to mature our process and maybe have a formal policy in place that people understand, you know, this is how we lock the door at the end of the day. This is what end of the day means, right? Who's responsible for locking the door? And we might even have, you know, at the more higher, most highest levels of process maturity, we might actually even have uh, an audit process to say, are we following our processes, our policies as appropriate, making sure that they're implemented? So, um, when we look at how to implement cyber maturity, we can look at it f uh, through both the capability maturity and the process maturity lens. Uh, and the two don't necessarily, uh, you know, they, they, they need to be implemented as appropriate for organizations. So if we decide that we need to have badge re readers at our doors to make sure that only authorized people that have an authorized issued badge can come into our facility, that's appropriate. But if we're a smaller organization, you know, there's only five of us in the organization, maybe I don't need to have a formal policy in place that says everybody has to have a badge. It's okay to have a team meeting and say, all right, everybody, we're going to start to, you know, implement this new badge capability. Everyone's responsible for maintaining their badge and only letting people in with the badge is as appropriate, right? But we can have that conversation of, we know we need to limit physical access, but how do we want to limit physical access and how mature do we want our processes to be around that, right? And cyber maturity helps us from that standpoint. So again, just as a, a quick summary um, in cyber maturity, right? We have the two concepts of capability maturity, process maturity, capability maturity typically increases from basic hygiene kind of principal things that need to be put in place. Um, uh, and then increases as we go up at the maturity scale till we have advanced processes. Again, going back to the biometric scanner, we have really advanced capabilities. Um, also with that uh, advanced capabilities or expectations, we typically see an increase in the technical um, capabilities that need to be implemented, right? What are the technologies needed to implement those more advanced kind of settings? Uh, and then as well, another thing that we see typically as we go up in maturity is specificity, right? On what needs to be implemented appropriately. So for example, at a lower maturity, we might say we want to limit access to uh, authorized people, right? But at a higher maturity, we need to define who are the authorized people? Who are we trying to keep out, right? What does authorized mean? What, how do we know that they are authorized, right? Do they have 
a valid need to know for the information that's contained within that physical facility, or do they just need to be able to, to get in um, uh, to perform their duties, right? So the specificity of how we're going to implement the controls does increase as the capability and maturity increases. Uh, from the process side, right, again, we might have word of mouth um, uh, as our pro program artifacts, or we might actually have policy standards and procedures put in place so that we understand, right, how we need to implement the, pro, uh, the cybersecurity capabilities, and then how, um, what are the processes and the cap requirements for the policies that we've defined for ourselves, right? Um, processes typically, as we go up in maturity scale from the process side, we also see a change from reactive security to proactive. So whereas we might have, you know, a security camera monitoring the door so that if something happens, we know that someone came into the facility, vice a proactive guard um, standing there keeping people out out of the facility. Um, and in some cases, we may need both, right? So again, the process maturity lets us have this conversation about what is appropriate for limiting physical access to our environment. And again, um, taking it back to the risk management approach for understanding what are the risks, what are we trying to implement, how robust do we need those capabilities to be so that we pick the appropriate maturity level. So again, my name is Tom Conkle. Um, just wanted to provide a, a brief overview on cyber maturity, the concepts and the capabilities and how you can use it to help uh, implement cybersecurity controls within your organization. Uh, feel free if you have any questions to reach out, I'd love to hear from you. Thanks, bye.